Alright guys, I'm going to try something completely different from what I usually do, as usual. I'm going to try and discuss last week's episode of Raw, which was July 25, 2011, of course. So first thing we're going to talk about is the beginning. The match between Rey Mysterio versus The Miz versus the WWE, for WWE Championship. Or the new one. And all I gotta say is that why can't the Miz kick this much ass normally? I mean, he's an okay guy, but he did a really good cutter in this match. It was like really one of those good falling cutters that he went really high up in the air. And his power bomb he did to Rey Mysterio was also really good. I was impressed. And angry at the same time. Techniques like that, the way he did it, these are simple moves, but he modified it so well that it actually looked like it could kick someone's ass. It actually entertained me. That's all I'm asking for, man. Just do more shit like that. Well, of course, Rey Mysterio managed to come out on top and. Alberto Rio tried to cash in the money in a bank so he can get that championship since Ray was so weak, but the nigga got rejected. Ray Mysterio jumped on his ass and Alberto Rio ran like a bitch. Probably needed some company from Ricardo Rodriguez. Probably needed some of his breastfeedings. He's such a pussy. Well, he's good. Anyway, then comes Ziggler vs. Born. As we know, Ziggler has a new theme song. It's just a different band covering it. It's moderately, marginally more heavy, but it still kind of feels like the same thing for me, just a little bit more aggressive. That's it. And Born did a good job, but. As you know, Bourne kind of switches from having upsets to being a full-on jobber. I was disappointed by his loss, but hey. I like both of these guys, Ziggler and Bourne. Ziggler is a little bit more simplified. He's not on the technical side, but he does more legitimate wrestling than most people. There, then there was a segment with Triple H, he brought back Jim Ross. I really don't give a shit about Jim Ross. I'm gonna be honest here. I mean, it's just a fucking commentator, guys. The Michael Cole was having a little bitch fit, and it was really <laughs> pathetic. I don't want to sit next to this guy. Somebody hold me. And he was like standing on the chair like... He was ready to do some table dance. Well, he was standing on that table. I, I was really annoyed. But I could tell by the look in Triple H's eyes that he was about us to talk some good shit on him. So he told him that if you don't show up on Friday, then you're on a breach of contract and we won't pay you for shit. And basically, he's out of it. Because, <sighs> as you know, it's kayfabe that Michael Cole Cold severance pays way too expensive. So he wouldn't just fire him on the spot. And he also promised him a match. All of a sudden, uh, our truth came out of nowhere. And he was just talking his bullshit. We get the little Jimmy shits. This nigga's crazy, but we all know that. And Triple H was talking that really good shit. He was making fun of his insanity and his schizophrenia. I don't even know why he's schizophrenic at the moment. <laughs> like he's seeing, he's seeing shit. He's hearing shit from other people that don't exist. But just because he got fucked over for 
the number one contendership. <laughs> That's a really crappy excuse to, and gimmick for making someone go heal. It's so unrealistic. <laughs> But hey, realism isn't always something that's desired. Alright, so he was talking that good shit and he said that he brought back someone who really wanted a piece of him. Then all of a sudden John Morrison came, made his fabulous return from May, where that was the last we ever saw of him. And he whooped our troops ass. He whooped them like crazy. I think it was like a slave. It was like back in the times of slavery. That nigga was getting his ass whooped good. I regret nothing. But what I said. Okay, so. Michael Cole came back. He was told to go to the locker room. Change it to Triple H's attire. He had uh, the King of Kings song. From Motorhead, and he had Triple H's Titantron, got in that ring. He was walking really uncomfortably. And Ryder came, his first real match in TV in like a month. His first match won on TV in quite a few months since Superstars got cancelled. And he, he kicked his ass, relatively. It, it was only a few seconds that match. He basically did a front kick, and then he did a double underhook, pushed him into the corner of the ring where his face probably got fucked up, or his shoulder. And then he did his finisher, and then a one, two, three count. That's basically the entire match. I'm glad Ryder's getting pushed, but I'm probably expecting a handicap match from against Michael McGillicuddy and David Otunga based on his appearance after their match when he crashed into their victory. Alright, let's go to the next segment. After that, we had a match between Alberto Del Rio and Kofi Kingston. This feud lasted quite a few months and I gotta say the match was better than the previous ones I'm glad to see that Alberto Del Rio has improved well he hasn't improved the writing team improved they're no longer making Alberto Del Rio win all his matches the same fucking way that kinda pissed me off from before we all know and it's not really something that I didn't just say everyone's talking about it. But Little Rio injures the guy, then he does the cross arm breaker. It's an intelligent technique, but it gets boring. Seriously, man, mix up that shit. And he did. Finally, the writing team, the creative staff, is being more creative on this guy. I mean, this match goes into all sorts of twists and turns, and I was legitimately interested I didn't fall asleep on the match that's how you know it's a good thing so I usually fall asleep on matches I find boring alright then we got Cena versus oh, I fucked up on that shit Cena versus Ray so Ray gets his second match he agreed to this and Cena agreed that he got fucked over big time for his championship and I don't know what the fuck Cena's complaining about. It's his fault that he lost that championship. He was about to get that screwball, but he had too much pride. He pushed that nigga out the way before he went to the belt guy and came back in the ring. Thought he was about to finish seeing Punk and the guy's ass beat. It was his damn fault. He put the company K Fabed on Jeopardy, so. I don't see how this is anything other than Cena being a whiner. But the match was good. One thing I noticed is that John Cena is better in matches when they're slow. When they're too fast, then it sucks. Because 
Cena just ends up running around the ropes, bouncing back and forth, doing occasional drop kicks, and just doing a lot of clotheslines. But this one, he mixes it up because it's slow. He tries to go on the mat instead of just bouncing back and forth the ropes like he's some fucking pinball. And as usual, when he's better, he does that gigantic leg drop from the top rope. Alright. I'm going. Stupid. My family's a bunch of idiots. I'm just gonna tell you that. Alright, so one of the unique things that Ray did the submission maneuver, the step over toe face lock, I think, or the STF on John Cena. But as of course. John Cena beat Rey Mysterio. I turned around and missed how he beat him, but that's that. Cena's the champ now. And as for the CM Punk finale, CM Punk made his appearance. It was kind of a shock value because he came for a new weird ass song, and everyone's thinking, "Where the f who the fuck is this guy? Where the fuck is he?" And then it's CM Punk and his new attire. And both of them raised their championship title, and I'm guessing it's going to be a champ versus champ thing. Kind of like John Cena versus JBL, where JBL thought he was a legitimate champ, in, and John Cena wanted to contest that. But that's it. That's all I thought. Overall, I thought this episode was relatively okay. They had how many matches? They had like about five matches. Which beats SmackDowns by one. Oh yeah, I forgot the Divas, so that's six. They beat SmackDown by two. But I don't review Diva matches because I don't care. I also forgot about Keith Stone. I chose Keith Stone, he's funny, but seriously, I don't care about anything the Divas say at the moment. When something interesting happens, tell me. Alright, I'm finished with this. Fuck y'all niggas. This is Mr. Wonka7, or Leon Red, whatever the fuck they call me. And suck my dick.